So for the Big Bandit streamer, we're going to start with the rear hook. I'm going to bring in six strands of Sexy Floss. And ultimately, I want these strands to extend back about an inch off the bend of the hook when I'm done here. So I'm just going to start back at the bend, hold them out there about where I want them. Get a hold of them with one or two wraps. And then I'm going to lift that up really simply and bring that thread forward. At that point, I'm going to take all those front strands, the front part of the strands here, and I'm just going to start to wrap them. And my goal is simple. I'm just going to bring them forward, covering up that hook shank as I go. Once I get directly behind the eye of the hook, I'm going to pull that up tight, come over it with the thread, cinch it down, secure it with several wraps. It is stretchy, so if you pull too tight on it and don't have enough wraps on it, it'll spring back out of there. I'm going to double check the length of these, pull these back together. Once again, I want them by about an inch, and so I'm going to snip them off there. That's going to give us a little representation of tail fins. Uh, at this point, I'm going to come and I'm going to rotate that hook upside down and I'm going to bring in a little bit of this ripple ice fiber and simply enough I'm going to drape it over the thread so I'm going to drape it over the thread fold it over pull up on that thread and just slide it straight down to the hook come around and I want to catch it with uh, I don't know just maybe two or three wraps around the hook shank and I'm going to let it flare out a little bit let it flare kind of brush it out and then push it back over the hook shank so once I have it pushed back over the hook shank, I'm going to come up over the top of the actual material. Secure that with a few wraps. Snip that guy out of there. And rotate it right side up. So pretty simply with the flash here, I'm going to pull up on it. And I want it about the same length as those sexy floss fibers that are sticking off the back of the hook. So I'm going to take my scissors here, I'm going to come underneath, cut it at just a little bit of a taper. So that, that all kind of flows together at the end there. Once I have that nice and secured, I'm going to put a little bit of zappa gap on the top of the hook shank. And we're going to bring in our first rabbit strip. And with the rabbit strip here, after I tie it in, my focal point is that I want the hairs, not the skin, but I want the hairs of this rabbit strip to reach about to the back of the sexy floss. So connect that there. I'm going to light it up with a bunch of thread wraps. Get it nice and locked down. Take a look at the back of it. Once again, I want that hair to come to about there. So I'm actually going to come in underneath it a little closer than you might think. And snip that off so that stuff kind of tapers together. Then we'll come in and I'm going to hit the front of this with some UV cure cure. At this point, I'm going to bring in a strand of 30 pound backing, and very simply here, I'm going to double this over. So I've got this doubled over, I'm make it nice and tight, and I'm just going to come right up through the eye of the hook here, pull that slack out, I'm going to bring it back over the top of this portion here, and when I pull this out of the vise, let this loose here, I'm just simply going to pull that slack over the hook and cinch it up so that it hits the front of the hook like that. I'm then going to bring in a 3D bead. It's a newer product this year from Hairline. So I'm going to take the free ends of the backing here. I'm going to take that 3D bead and very simply I'm going to thread it over the backing, both strands, so that what I end up with looks like this. 
this point, I'm going to grab my front hook. This is also an owner mosquito hook. Same hook as the rear hook. Size 1 for this pattern. Get that guy in the vise. I'm going to secure my thread to that front hook first. Cover that shank with thread. Bring that thread back up in that area. And when I bring this in, I want that bead to sit right there and just to kind of touch the back bend uh, of that front hook. So I'm going to set it there. I'll throw a couple wraps over the backing and just kind of double check to see where I'm at. I can still pull slack back and forth if need be. I think that looks pretty good for where I'm at. So I'm going to cover that up. Then I'm going to take this slack here just because I'm a little OCD. I'm going to pull it forward, get all that trapped, and then continue to walk that thread back. Trying to keep that back in, in general on top of the hook shank. Cover that guy up. At this point here, I'm going to use that hair clip on the back of the vise. I'm just going to use it to kind of grab a hold of that rear hook. Just keeps it out of the way, keeps my fingers from getting tagged. I'm now going to take some zappa gap and I'm going to coat the wraps that I've just laid down on that backing. And this does a couple things for me. Number one, obviously, it's going to lock that down in place. But it's also going to help me in my next step. So I'm going to bring in some OT35 lead here. And very simply, starting at that same point, I'm going to throw down what usually amounts to about 10 wraps or so. And I want to cover just to the front of where that backing is. I'm going to break that off there. And now because of that glue, it's obviously going to lock down pretty well. I'm not too worried about throwing a bunch of thread wraps on it. So I'm going to take my thread now and I'm going to bring it about halfway up that clump. And at that point, I'm going to bring back my friend Zappagap. And put a little bit on the top of those coils. I'll bring in some more rabbit strip here. And I want, to, I want this to go about halfway up the coils. I want to be able to catch the front of it. But I'm only going to wrap back about an eighth of an inch. I'm not going to go crazy with the thread wraps here. I don't want to cover this um, this rabbit strap up, strip up, excuse me, rearward toward the hook. Just want to catch the front of it. Call it good at about that point. And when I look at this, I want the skin on the front piece to stop about where the skin on the second piece starts. So I'm going to kind of mark that, come in here, make my cut. And when that lays back, it should about line it up. It's going to give it a free range of motion. It's not going to inhibit it, and it's still going to continue that profile back. At this point, I'll rotate this upside down in the vise. I'm going to come to the front of the coils here and just off of the front. I'm going to bring in a little bit thicker clump of the Ripple Ice Fiber. And once again, I'm going to drape this over the thread. So I'm going to bring this in here. I'm going to drape that over the thread. I'm going to slide it down, take a couple good wraps just right around the hook shank. So I'm leaving myself a little play in that thread. And then I'm going to let that kind of puff and flare out on me. So it's going to puff and flare and I'm going to take it and I'm just going to play with it a little bit. I'm going to run it back along the sides. So I'm trying to kind of cover that bottom, eh, bottom half, bottom two thirds of the profile of that lead wire. So once I get it about where I want it, I'm going to hold it back with my fingers and I'm going to start to come over the top of it with the thread. So when I rotate this back, I just want to double check. I've got the coils covered on that side, coils covered on that side. I'm just going to let that material drape back. So what I will do here is I'll take that thread and I'm going to let it sit about where it's at. And I'm going to come in with one more strip of rabbit. I'm going to take this strip here and I'm going to cut it at about a 45 degree angle going away from me. And the reason there is that when I catch the front of this strip, I'm going to be able to lay down subsequent wraps without having to actually wrap over the top of the rabbit strip. So I'm going to catch just the tip of it there. Then I'm going to return this thread and drop it off the front of that clump. So at this point here, I'm going to come in 
with some Zappa Gap and I'm going to coat the front of that little clump that I've made with the ripple ice fiber. Get it there, get it there. I'm going to take that rabbit strip and I'm going to come one nice big full wrap around the front clump of that material. I'm going to stop it right there. I'm going to moisten my fingertips to make life a little bit easier and just kind of brush that back out of the way. Take my thread up and over, wiggle it through those hairs, cinch it down there, get a few good wraps in front of it on the hook shank, and then bring it over and I'm going to clip the excess off. So part of the deal with using these fish mask, um, flyman fish masks, is that you have to build up a cone of material underneath where the mask is going to go. Otherwise, it's not going to have anything to bind to. And that's what we're attempting to do here. So we've got this pretty well built up. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in three strands of sexy floss. And I'm going to just hold them on the near side here. I'm going to catch them with a couple wraps of thread, staying up on that lump. And then I'm very simply going to take them. I'm going to pull them around to the opposite side and repeat that same process. Once I get to that point and those are taken care of, I'm just going to return the thread to the shank here. I'm going to throw in a quick whip finish. Quick half hitch, excuse me. And so what you have done so far looks should look somewhat similar to this. And then to finish it off, what we'll do is we'll bring it in. I'm going to coat the front of that clump thoroughly with Zepigap. And we're going to bring in a fish mask. The size that I use for um, this number one owner hook model of this big bandit is a size 6 fish mask. And uh, as I stated, if you watch the mask bandit video, I prepped these in advance uh, on longer hooks. And so the eyes for this mask are already in place. They're already UV cured. And so all I have to do is bring in the mask. I'm going to slide it right over the front uh, of what I've created. And you can see it creates a really nice fish shaped head profile you get the big eyes a little bit of reflecting from the back so I'm gonna bring this in build up a little bit of thread head in the front we'll whip finish it zap a gap it and uh, we'll be good